They were such pretty shoes, too, Sandra said. Yeah, but I guess the best thing about them is what they represent, Matt pointed out, still scraping. Even with all the new ship construction, weapons manufacture, logistical support necessary to maintain and supply two major fleets, more than two counting the Imperials, we can still scrape up enough resources to make a pair of fancy shoes. He shrugged. Of course, we're also supporting large armies and multiple theaters. The running was turned into a world war. He nodded ruefully at the shoe that was starting to turn gray as it dried. I don't know whether to be proud of these or embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed, Sandra scolded. Except for maybe ruining them. And yours aren't the only shiny ones. Just be glad we've got enough shoes and sandals for all our troops. That's something to be proud of. Matt supposed she was right, as usual. It wasn't as if the supply of ships, planes, weapons, ammunition, rations, or anything else he could think of had slowed. If anything, it was speeding up. The only real shortage was personnel. And with more troops beginning to arrive from the empire of the New Britain Isles, what would have been Hawaii, California, and countless Pacific Isles in the world they left, and the growing addition of Lemurian troops from the Great South Isle, essentially Australia, even their numbers were starting to improve. But here, on the Western Front, they faced potentially endless numbers of furry, feathery, somewhat reptilian, and entirely lethal Grick. And the Eastern Front aimed at the rabidly fanatical human holy dominion in the Americas, did have serious supply problems, particularly when it came to the more modern weapons the Alliance was producing, because of the vast distances involved. Worse, it appeared that a major battle was brewing there, and Lord High Admiral Harvey Jenks, commander-in-chief of all Allied forces in the East, Sink East, had just been handed some unpleasant surprises. He was jockeying to counter them even while his forces were overextended by a strategy based on an outdated understanding of the situation. Matt shook his head. Jenks was on his own. Half a world away, there was nothing Matt could do to help him, and he was about to embark on a major, extremely risky operation of his own. He had always believed the old saying that fortune favors the bold— he couldn't remember who said it first and recognized that history was replete with examples of the opposite. Still, though the Grand Alliance was just beginning to hit its stride, it couldn't afford a long war of attrition against the Grick. Grick bred much too fast, and the Allies just didn't have and couldn't get the numbers for that. Now was the time for a crushing blow while the Grick were on their heels. The Doms were bad. Maybe worse than the Grick in some ways, but they were people, well, human at least, and couldn't replace losses any faster than the Allies. So if the war in the East wasn't exactly on a back burner, the primary focus of the Alliance was, and had to be in Matt's view, against the Grick for now.